Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are going to be looking at all of the wonderful free software that's out there. I don't mean free as in free and open source, I mean free as in cost you no money. And we're going to focus on graphics. Now graphics is a pretty wide and vast topic. So we're going to cover things like Photoshop alternatives, 3D programs, video editing, and so on. So without further ado, let's jump in. We're going to look at the commercial program and then some of the alternatives that are out there for it. Now these don't all fit perfectly into categories, so you might find something is an alternative to this and that because it does some of what another thing does. But hopefully you will find something useful here. We're gonna start with the big one and that's Photoshop. Now these are probably the most obvious answers. If you've heard of Photoshop, you've probably heard of the alternatives that are out there. But the alternative number one is of course GIMP. Now GIMP has come a long way recently as far as the user interface goes. That has always been the big thing that held it back. They've been working on plumbing type stuff lately. GIMP stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. It is a general purpose uh, photo editing software. If GIMP doesn't do it for you, the one with the ugliest website in the world might. And it's paint.net. Now I've been using paint.net for years. You can basically think of paint.net as uh, Microsoft Paint with a whole lot of features plugged in on top of it. And it's sort of my Swiss army knife for digital editing. So it's what I use in place of Photoshop most of the time. Or there is also Photopea. Now Photopea is browser-based software. This is actually, if you go to their website, which is uh, photopea.com, you will find this. And I'm actually somewhat surprised that they have not been sued out of existence because this is almost a direct clone of Photoshop that runs in your browser. So those are the three most obvious Photoshop alternatives out there that are all free. There's GIMP, there's Photopea, and there's Paint.net. Now Photopea does have uh, ad supported, one of those things to be aware of. You can get an account and get rid of that, uh, but something to be aware of. So next up, we're coming into Adobe Illustrator. This is the vector graphics kind of application out there. And there is one clear, free, obvious choice to it. And that is Inkscape. Now, if I could make a small uh, side suggestion, if you're in the cheap market, it's also highly worth checking out Serif software. Those are my weapons of choice, uh, Affinity Photo, and especially Affinity Designer. If you're looking at an alternative to Adobe Illustrator, and you have a little bit of money available, Affinity Designer is an amazing program. But if you have no money available, there is Inkscape. Uh, some people absolutely love this application. It's an open source vector graphics based application. Uh, very steadily updated. So it's definitely nice in that regard. And they've been focusing on performance lately, which is a much needed addition. Now we have a couple more vector graphics applications coming up in this next category. And this is sort of a weird overlap. This is, uh, say you're looking for Adobe Animate. Now, if you've never heard of Adobe Animate, Adobe Animate is what became of Adobe Flash, the uh, vector graphics side of the equation. So if you're doing vector graphics based animation right now, Adobe Animate is the commercial package of choice, but there are some great alternatives to it that are free. First off, there is Rive, uh, which is a vector graphics based animation application. You can see it in action right there. There are some premium pl premium plans available, but you can do some very functional things out of the box completely for free with Rive. If you're looking something a little bit more elaborate, there's Open Tunes. Now, Open Tunes is more of a uh, it's, it's an alternative more to other programs that I didn't put as a category, but if you're doing 2D based animation, this is uh, st started by uh, Studio Ghibli. Uh, it, is, it used to be a commercial software. It is now completely uh, open source and free. So if you're trying to get into professional quality animation, uh, Open Tunes is definitely one to check out. Next up, we have Synfig Studio. I did a video on this one. It is an open source 2D animation software uh, for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Um, I do believe they got an epic mega grant at one point in time, but I might be wrong there. Uh, they do have some backers. Uh, they were in Google Summer of Code for sure. Uh, so this is probably the most close thing you're going to find to open source flash. So if you need to do animation, uh, vector graphics, drawing, uh, that kind of stuff, uh, Synfig Studio is definitely one to check out. And then there's also Envy. I did a video about this one as well. This is another uh, vector graphics animation package. Uh, similar thing, you kind of animate things over a timeline. Uh, I think this one is probably a little bit on the simpler side, uh, but if you are looking for options, you have quite a few in the Flash alternative slash Adobe Illustrator for animation and drawing kind of programs. Uh, so after that, we are now going to move on to, I lost my mouse. Uh, we are going to move on to, um, I'll call this the uh, Corel Painter alternatives, but this is Painter, um, Art Rage, and so on. There's a number of natural media style painting applications out there. And this one, uh, the alternative is an absolute no brainer. And that is Krita. Krita is open source. The version five beta was just released. Uh, this actually is also an animation software, so it could have fit in the last category. But if you are looking at um, 
doing drawing, digital painting, that kind of thing, definitely check out Create a completely free, completely open source. And another one that's kind of of interest is MyPaint. Even though their website sucks, MyPaint provides kind of a natural media painting application. Now, the interesting thing is the uh, digital brushes powering MyPaint actually now work in Krita Beta 5. Uh, so hopefully at one point in time, we'll consider these two a single entry. But for right now, uh, MyPaint is kind of the area where if you need to get like... Um, uh, recreations of charcoal or water paint or that kind of stuff. The, the drawing engine behind my paint is actually very quite cool. All right, so now we're going to move on to a very niche area and that is Lightroom. Now this is for people taking up uh, generally raw photographs and uh, relighting them, rejigging re them, etc. And the uh, obvious open source alternative to this is Darktable. I think Darktable and Lightroom is a cool play on words, but it may not be. It may just be, you know, Darkroom, Darktable. Uh, but uh, anyways, this is basically an open source uh, image editing program for uh, that kind of stuff. You can even see light table right here. So yeah, uh, dark table is definitely an open source alternative in that particular space. So if you're trying to do some post-production work, cleaning up photos, uh, that is what dark table is all about. The next space we're going to move into is just 3D. So I picked Maya. It could have been 3D Studios Max. It could have been um, Modo. It could have been, um, oh, what's the, the one they love in Germany? Uh, Maxin. Um, Cinema 4D, any one of those. There's a number of commercial 3D applications out there. And there is one very, very obvious um, open or free alternative. And that is, of course, Blender. And Blender is improving at a rapid and staggering rate. So if you're looking for a 3D graphics application, Blender is definitely one to check out. It does a shocking amount of features and functionality in there. The sculpting is improving every day and so on. So definitely you have Blender, but it's not the only thing in this category. Another one is Sculpt GL. Now this is actually Sculpt GL. You can see it here in action. I did a video on this in the past. It's actually a sculpting application that is remarkably capable and is actually running entirely in my browser. So if you want to check that one out, uh, Sculpt GL is another sculpting alternative out there uh, if that is what you are looking for. So next up, we're moving on to, I guess we could call this texture generation. Uh, and here, your, your big one is, uh, there was Substance Painter and Substance Designer. Uh, used to be run by a company called Algorithmic. They were swallowed up by the Adobe machine and given new and terrible icons. There are, those are just horrible icons, but these are exceptional programs. So basically on the one hand, you got Substance Designer, which is for making uh, PBR based materials basically out of nothing using procedural node graphs. And then you've got Substance Painter, which is used for drawing those things on 3D models uh, to, to oversimplify it. And uh, for the Substance Painter, some of that functionality is in Blender, by the way, but we have a few options there. Uh, in terms of the first one I highly recommend, and I absolutely love this program, is Material Maker. So go to the Material Maker website, which I think I now have open twice. This is a program completely free uh, that it, it's updated constantly. It, it is the same thing. You create materials using a network base of nodes. It's a great program. And amazingly enough, you actually even added 3D painting. It's very primitive, uh, but you can do 3D painting with your procedurally generated textures. I covered this a number of times on the channel. I will continue to cover it a number of times in the future. It is an excellent program and I highly recommend you check it out and it is completely free. But that's not the only option we have here. Another one we've got is Pixaflux. I covered this in the past as well. Uh, you can create CG materials using uh, node-based workflow. Sound familiar? Uh, well, that's the idea behind it. Basically, you build these node networks together and it creates materials as a result. Normal maps, uh, you can bring in images and textures to work with and so on. So this is another option in that particular space if you're trying to create um, node-based procedural materials. Pixelflux is another option. Another one that is getting more and more common is Mixer. Now this is Quixel who was purchased by Epic Games um, and they make they made Mixer completely free. Now Mixer isn't a one-to-one -one peer yet. It doesn't do the exact same thing. It's not really a procedural workflow. It's a remixing workflow is the idea. Uh, but you can use this guy completely for free. It integrates with a number of different applications and game engines out there. So you can actually use it directly with Blender if you so wish. Um, and again, it's free and it is pretty powerful. So if you need to texture objects, it kind of does some of what, um, 
uh, Substance Designer does, and it kind of does some of what Substance Painter does. It just has a slightly different workflow, uh, but it's the most, I guess you could say, professional of the alternatives out there, and it would probably be the starting point, although I highly encourage you to check out uh, Material Maker. Great application. Uh, but Quixel Mixer is amazingly enough free, and if you use uh, Unreal Engine in your workflow, you can also access their uh, Quixel Mega Scans huge collection of textures, which you can then bring into Mixer and mix them, thus the name. Uh, and then another option out there, technically not free, is Armor Paint. Now, Armor Paint came from the Armory engine, which was built on top of uh, Blender. It's an excellent project. Unfortunately, the engine side of things to be, to be somewhat uh, less paid attention to uh, because he's doing more work on this side of things. But what it allows you to do is paint in 3D um, in uh, using uh, PBR-based material workflow. So it's a lot like um, what Substance Painter does. Uh, it's definitely a subset here. Now I do mention it on the free list because if you have the technical ability to build this one from uh, source code, you can actually get it for free. If you can't, um, it's like 20 bucks or something like that. So it's, it's a very affordable piece of software, uh, but if you build it from source code, you can actually get this guy completely for free. And then we're moving into our final category. And I picked Premiere as the, the, the typical commercial application, but this could be uh, Final Cut, you name it. It's basically video editing. Personally, I use Camtasia on a more daily basis. And then I use something like HitFilm if I'm doing something a little bit fancier. Uh, but again, if you're using HitFilm, if you're doing Premiere, if you're doing um, whatever else, the alternatives out there, free options are, well, for one, there's HitFilm Express, definitely worth checking out. Um, it's a subset where you can buy additional functionality via plugins. Uh, but the one that is kind of shockingly free is DaVinci Resolve. And this one, I, I think basically Blackmagic Design wants you to buy all of their crap, their consoles, their panels, and so on. So they give away uh, DaVinci Resolve 17 video editing software. Uh, it's used in professional environments. I also find it very crashy personally, uh, but it is a powerful video editing option. It's also a very complicated video editing option. So that's definitely one of those things you wanna be aware of. This is not an easy application to learn as far as video editing goes, but it's just a professional suite that is completely free, which is definitely nice. Um, and then we move on. Another option you've got is Blender again. Blender actually has a non-linear non video editor built in. I don't have good results with it, uh, at least in uh, running it on Windows. Some people definitely, they, they swear by it. Never been a personally big fan. I've always found the, the video editing aspects of Blender to be the worst parts of Blender, uh, but your mileage may vary. Just one of those things to be aware of. Blender is a capable video editing software. Um, and then finally, there's OpenShot. Now I've actually got zero experience with OpenShot, but this is 100% free open source video editing software. And yep, that's the end of the list. Again, not a program I have personal experience with, so I, I can't give you a recommendation or, or feedback on it, but that is the list. By the way, the list is all linked down below. So if you wanna download anything I just mentioned, they're all available there. And of course, this is just scratching the surface. So we covered a number of different areas, Photoshop alternatives, Adobe alternatives, uh, animate alternatives, uh, 3D editing, substance um, uh, designer and painter alternatives and so on. But there definitely can be more in all of those categories. So if you have another recommendation, something that didn't make my list, uh, please do let me know comments down below. Also worth checking out, and I will link this as well. Uh, I do a ongoing um, tools for game development that are free resources thing over on dev game. Uh, almost everything we just mentioned will probably be there as well as including a number of other free alternatives out there. So if you do have a suggestion, something I missed in those categories that you would find to recommend, please recommend them in the comments down below. And hopefully I exposed you to at least one new program to check out. All right, let me know what you think. Uh, there's a world of alternatives out there and it's pretty amazing the world we live in. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.